Designers often look at history to influence their style and designs while responding to a host of issues that relate to the consumer. They also need to understand how much impact and responsibility they have on society. To help them understand design movements and cultural influences, designers need to have a basic knowledge and understanding of design movements since 1900. A design movement is described as a group of people who have a similar approach to design. The arts and crafts movement was founded by William Morris at the end of the 19th century. He was famous for his wallpaper, furniture and textile designs that were inspired by organic shapes and patterns found in nature. The furniture in this style is styled with upright and angular details. Morris was keen to promote the production of quality products. Arts and crafts products were made using expensive materials and traditional techniques by hand that only the wealthy could afford. The Art Nouveau style is the one that you're most likely to have seen. The designs are flowing and curvy, often using floral or insect motifs. The style took its name from a shop that opened in Paris in 1895, based on the lines of climbing plants and Japanese art. These designs were popular with designers of glass, furniture, fabrics and wrought ironwork. The most famous designs were lamps from Louis C. Tiffany and the jewellery and glasswork of René Lalique. Have you ever been to New York or looked at pictures of its skyline? If you have, you will have seen the Chrysler Building, which is a great example of Art Deco architecture. Art Deco designs are inspired by African and Egyptian art involving bold colours and were used in interior designs between 1920 and 1939. A famous designer of this era is Clarice Cliff, a designer of ceramics who decorated her work using a bright, bold style. She did this until the Second World War started, when it became illegal to use time and resources to decorate products. Bauhaus was a school of art and design founded by Walter Gropius, with the motto of Form Follows Function. Products should be designed with their function as the starting point rather than their appearance. Furniture in this style used chrome tubing and black leather. Between 1919 and 1933, Bauhaus designers used modern materials and mass production methods, as well as experimental work using colour and form. Designers were encouraged to be artistic and skilled while following the principle that form should follow function. Modernism sounds very space-age, but it refers to when designers started to move away from organic lines and began to use geometric shapes that were easier to mass-produce. The ergonomic designs were made using appropriate materials and very little decoration, and made famous by designers such as Charles Rennie Mackintosh. The style was founded in Holland by a group of painters and architects, including Theo van Doesbury and Gerrit Rietveld. The designs were basic and they used simple shapes, vertical lines and primary colours, producing a range of furniture and architecture that use only essential form and colour in their designs. The postmodernist design movement rejected the form follows function idea, as they believed that style should be the starting point. The Memphis movement sounds like a tribute to Elvis, but it's not, it's part of postmodernism. Their designs used bright, contrasting colours and different materials, with the most notable design being Ettore Sotsas's carton cabinet. Other postmodernism styles include kitsch, which is considered tacky and tasteless by some, and extreme minimalism, which uses designs without decorative features. Designers need to realise that no matter where and when they are designing, they need to recognise that design movements and cultural influences are still influencing new product development.